often a power shift and the ability to shift power is right in front of your face. See, I'm right here where I was a dollar van driver. And you see all these buses, let me share this with you. All these buses are picking up people from the subway who are coming in from Manhattan. They're taking them deeper into Queens or they're bringing them to the subway from deep into Queens. And me, what did I do? I was what we call a dollar van driver. Now, a dollar van driver is somebody who uh, has a van, like these gentlemen right here, and they're parked outside to offer rides to people for one dollar. Now, where I live in Queens is obviously is a challenging neighborhood. Look, there's cops up there. Some some crap is going on up the block over there, right? So it's a pretty rough neighborhood. But in all reality, it's not necessarily that it's a rough neighborhood. When you have so many people, when you think about it, if only 5% of them or even 3% of them are doing the wrong thing, then it's called a bad neighborhood because you have so many people. But in all reality, what did I think about? I thought that if I'm picking up people that are coming from Manhattan or going to Manhattan, those are the real superheroes. Those are teachers, firefighters, uh, stockbrokers, lawyers, accountants, and people with knowledge. And what I did was, when I picked them up for a dollar, and the reason why you pick them up for a dollar is because at that time, Queens and many outskirts were called two fare zones, and that's why the houses were so cheap, because it would cost you two fares to get all the way to the city. You would have to pay one time for the bus and then another time for the train, and that would cost you a lot of money, obviously, daily than living in Manhattan because it was a long trip. Plus, it would cost you about 90 to uh, two hours minutes uh, in time, two hours worth of time to get each way there. So four hours of your day was spent traveling. And that's why people come out to get uh, lower cost housing. I tapped into the fact that I realized that in my van, I would get maybe 15 passengers and I'd have them in there for an hour and I would drive them up and down the boulevard because they'd rather get in the van instead of the bus. So now I'm competing with the MTA, the Mass Transit Authority. I'm competing with other van drivers. And I got to know those people over the two and three and five years of driving them up and down, up and down. Late at night sometimes, if it was a female and she had to walk maybe four blocks off of the bus route, Maybe I'd take it for free if I didn't have many other van, uh, people in my van, or maybe I'd charge an extra dollar if I had like five or six people in there, and I would take them to their home two or three blocks up, so it's midnight and they can get there safe. What did that do? That created a community within the people in my van. I started to create people who waited for me at 12 o'clock at night because they knew that, number one, the bus was not gonna take them off the route. They were gonna be safe with me. It was a little bit cheaper and they knew me. And in return, what did I do? I started to pick their brains. I found mentors in my van. After two, three years of driving around these people that had a lot of college education people or people who were teachers or people who were, uh, you know, always getting uh, and giving advice to others, I started to pick their brains and I started to shift the power to myself. Now, I could have stayed as a van driver and maybe the most, the highest my business, maybe I had two or three or five vans to start renting out to people. I'm definitely not going to be big enough to take over the MTA, but I started to talk to those people and they shared with me how work-life balance, how I should start looking at my finance, how it wasn't how much I made, it was how much I retained, and I started to shift the power to myself. And it was purely because I just looked at the power of the people and the community that I was serving in my van. Other people were like, I don't want to do that. It's dangerous out there. I'm going to get tickets by cops. But if you're going to be there working anyway, how do you absorb the most information and shift the power to yourself? Those people were happy to give me that knowledge. Those people were being paid by big companies in the city to give them that knowledge, and I got it for free. Plus, matter of fact, I didn't get it for free. They actually gave me a dollar after they gave me that knowledge, and that is all about a power shift. So whether the community is in your van, whether the community is in your workplace, in your church, on your social media platform, where you hang out, there is a way that you can tap into the power of other people and they will give you power and be happy to do it. And that is what a power shift is about.